Hey there, intuition lovers. Kim Chesney here. I am so excited to talk with you today about my intuition filter method of learning to understand your intuition and tell the difference between your intuition and your regular old thoughts. Um, that is one of the number one questions I get as people start to work with their intuition is how do I know the difference between my intuition and my mind and my imagination? And um, there's a lot of really easy ways to actually differentiate um, the intuitive function from your mental processes. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about that and show you some really uh, simple exercises that you guys can start to do right now to bring that into your life and start using it every day so that you can tap into that intuition and make better decisions, smarter decisions, be more creative, be more connected, really to, to connect with your own self and your true vision and your true voice. That's really the reason that we study intuition and really acknowledge intuition as such a powerful part of our life. It's that connection to our inner true self and that guidance that comes from a higher place, a place that our mind can't always access. So it's a real place and it's a very normal, natural part of our human wiring. It's just the way we're built. There's part of us that has access on a quantum level to the information that you know maybe we don't see in our, in our immediate sensory areas. So, um, but that's another video. But today I'm really gonna focus on the process of intuition and how you can actually start to use it right now uh, to make these changes in your life so that you can see those benefits. So the first thing to ask yourself when you, let's say you have a situation and you're just not sure if it's your gut like talking to you or if you're just afraid of something or making something up or some sort of um, you know situation where you can't tell the difference if it's your mind or if it's really your intuition saying, hey, don't do this, or hey, do this, this is really good for you, or no, don't do this, because something's shady here, right? So our intuition can be that sort of inner BS detector. It knows when things aren't right for us, or there's something wrong in the situation very naturally. So the first question you're gonna wanna ask yourself when you get into a situation like this is, um, did it just come to me? Is this something that came to me? Was it an immediate apprehension? Because that, that's the number one characteristic of an intuition. It is an immediate apprehension or sudden insight or first impression that just simply comes to you without thinking. So that's the key right there. There's no thinking involved. If you catch yourself trying to figure something out or thinking something through, then you can be pretty sure that it's not your intuition because there's no thinking that goes involved in, in intuition. Intuition is like anti-thinking. So like Eckhart Tolle says, when you get into that place of inner stillness, it speaks. What speaks to you is your intuition. So getting to that place of inner peace and quiet is the best place to hear your intuition in meditation or in the shower, when you're driving in your car, when your mind isn't going a million directions or overwhelmed with tons of information. So when you get into that place and the stillness speaks, you know, what is it saying to you? What pops into your head? What do you simply receive? Right? If it's something that you passively received and, and it just came to you, right? those are genuine qualities of an intuition. So, um, so you can scratch that off your list if you're thinking, if you're overthinking, it's not intuition, right? But if it's something that came to you, there's a good chance it could be. So then we take it to the next step of the filter, which is um, do you have a knowing feeling, right? So we talk about there's no mind involved, but there's also no emotions involved. There's only a feeling in so far as it's a knowing feeling. You just have a knowing feeling that something's not right, or you just have a knowing feeling that you should take a job. It's not like you have an emotion, right? If you're afraid of taking a job, or if you really, really, really want this job because it means you're gonna you know, make all this money and be super rich, well then that's an ego desire, and that's a personal attachment that can be getting in your way. So these, all these things clog genuine intuition. Real intuition has to be approached from a place of non-attachment a place, a neutral place, where you're able to see the truth, not the truth that you want, right? So, so really tuning into that place that's not attached and um, there are, where there are no emotions or desires or fears, um, if you're in a place like that, in that kind of still, quiet place of knowing, then there's a good chance that it's a genuine intuition. So that's the second quality to look for um, when you're testing out your intuition. The third is to check yourself. Now, we always talk about a gut check. Well, in this particular situation, you wanna ask yourself, is this intuition related to my personal truth? Or is it something that you know I've been conditioned to do from the worldly perspective, right? Like if I'm 
feel like I should, you know, marry this person? Am I doing this because I'm really in love and this is really my path? Or am I doing this because it feels like the right thing to do in societal terms? Like every, all my friends are getting married. I should do what they're doing. Uh, my parents really like this person. I should do what they're doing, right? So, so you have to really do that gut check and check with yourself. Is this my personal truth? Am I doing this for the right reasons? Because intuition is just for you. That's the beauty of intuition. It doesn't rely on social norms or social constructs. It is made for you and you alone. Your intuition is completely unique to you and will tell you your unique path. That's why none of us can get on a book and say, well, this is exactly how the, what's right and wrong because it's different for each of us. We each have our own unique path in this world. And our intuition is our guide to that path. So if you get to the place where you understand that it's really something that's you, if, it's, if it speaks to you from your heart, from your true place of peace and power, then there's a good chance it's your intuition. And finally, and this is really the kicker, um, if your intuition persists, you have to ask yourself, is it staying? Is it holding? Is, am I getting the same message over and over again? Because intuition doesn't change. Intuition isn't like, okay, one minute says yes, the next minute says no, and you're not sure. Intuition is that still place of peace and power and inner knowing. And it doesn't change. It persists. It's consistent. You can go back to that thought and it still holds. Yeah, I have this intuition that I should take this job. You go back the next day, how does it feel? Do you still have that intuition? Do you still have that feeling? Do you still have that, that, that motivation within you to do this? If you do, if that holds for days, hours, weeks, then again, it's likely that it's your intuition. So these are all really um, simple ways, simple little checklists that you can do to kind of assess your intuitive um, impressions and see if they're genuine. You know, if it's a first impression, that's great. If it's a strong knowing feeling, that's great. If it's connected to your personal truth and is not part of the influence of society or friends and family, that's great. And most of all, if it's persistent and consistent and constantly guides you in the same direction with the same voice of inner stillness, again, it's, a, it's quite likely that it's your intuition. So um, I'm putting together a checklist of all the different things that um, can be your intuition and not be your intuition. So be sure to check that out. And if you're really interested in going deeper into your intuition and learning more about how you can start to use it in everyday life, just really in a very practical way, but also a very profound way. You know, intuition is, it helps us every minute of the day. It helps us make our choices, but it also is our deepest and highest connection to like everything in the world and what we are and what we are made for. So it truly has the power to change your life when you really start to listen to your inner voice and understand what it's been saying to you all these years and why you've been made, right? Intuition is there to guide you to your best life and to show you the shortest possible path to your best future. So if you're really ready to do that and be there and step into your power, intuition is the key. Creating a culture of this insightfulness in your life to complement our mindfulness, to complement our spiritual practice, to complement our work and our parenting and our relationships, that's what intuition is all about. So that's what we teach at Intuition Lab. We have weekly online development courses. We have immersive online programs. We have destination retreats all over the world. We are currently enrolling now and we're also waitlisting for a bunch of really awesome future classes. So I invite you to join us, check it out. You can get our free starter kit right now. Um, you can download that uh, at no cost. It has an amazing, uh, it's a three-step program to ignite your intuition and get all these intuitive juices flowing and help you get into that headspace where you really can hear your inner voice and understand what it's saying to you. So thanks for listening. Um, um, I've had a great time talking with you today and always remember to your own higher self, be true. Mwah. <laughs>